Yo, what's going on? In today's video, I pretty much got the how to make combat statuses, a combat status system, I should say. So, if, um, I was only supposed to drop this video like for like mid mid January, I think, and stuff. But I just never got to it. So, someone, someone just asked about it two days ago. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and knock that out before I even continue with my other videos. So yeah, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing me. Really do appreciate it. We're halfway to seven thousand. Thank you for all the comments too. I really appreciate everyone who's dropping all the love in the comment section. I really appreciate all that. All the comments like. You know, great video, your you know, great script or whatnot. I appreciate all the love and support, all the love and support y'all been showing me. Really appreciate it. What's up to everybody watching the premiere? Let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first to explain combat status, right? A combat status system. You guys know when you're playing, we'll use Battlegrounds game for example, because I feel like I have the most knowledge out of all games of Battlegrounds games because I've made so much stuff from it. So you know when you're playing a Battlegrounds game, right? Um and you know how each attack the there are different attacks. You have your, you know, your ability attacks like you know your one two three four attacks that play like a little a little mini cutscene right we'll call it a mini cutscene then you have your basic m1 attacks you know your punches or sword slashes whatever right um and then yeah i really think it's like just like three different attacks like three different types right and then you have your um what's it called then you have like the we'll say we'll say special or main cutscenes and that's when like a player is like you know using like the player is, is like you know using their ultimate mode and they're using like their ultimate ability like a domain expansion or something you know what i'm saying so <clears throat> those are like a list of like on a list set of priorities right like obviously at the bottom would be m1s because you know how like if a pl like say two players are fighting each other right and they're just using basic m1s but if someone could go third party them like you could go over and punch either one of them and you would be able to like you know like override what they're doing like you would be able to like if they're attacking you would be attacking both of them and they would just you know their attack would stop until they're like you know they get some space some distance from you right and then you go to like the second priority cutscene now when you get to cutscenes cutscenes cannot be interrupted right like if a player is currently in an animation where like you know like they're just doing like a punch barrage or something and stuff right like they're doing like a type of wombo combo type thing right you can't interrupt that and you definitely can't interrupt like an ultimate skill cutscene you can't interrupt that right so it's like a list set of priorities and stuff so i'm just going to just introduce the concept to show you guys how you would set that up in like a combat system so how you could recognize okay this is the player's combat status based on that combat status will they be able to use set attack and stuff so yeah let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so first thing first of course you're going to need a rig to test i wanted to just go ahead and knock this out because we need to add one little thing to this so click look, click rig builder add your desired rig right um and then inside of the rig you're going to want to insert a string value this is because i'm not testing it with uh, an actual player so since i'm testing with mpc we have to manually do this you don't have to worry about doing this with actual players because we're going to do it like via the script. We're just doing this because this is just an NPC. So we're going to read the value to combat status and you're going to leave it blank. Blank means like they're like they're not doing like that means they're like they're not doing anything like they're not attacking. They're not blocking anything like that. Right. Then let's enter their mode event into replicated storage. We're going to rename setter mode event combat event boom then in sound service i have two punch sounds because i just want to clarify i took the code from my m1 my updated m1 combat system from the strongest battleground and stuff i'm not going to do no explaining as to really how it works because i have a video on that if you're curious to know exactly how everything works and stuff i'm just simply using it as a as uh like a, a demonstration to demonstrate how it would work in a combat system but yeah so i got my punch sound effects i got from the toolbox and then we're going to open up stutter player insert a local script into stutter player scripts right <clears throat> <clears throat> and then we're going to rename the script to combat script and in parentheses put local then we're going to delete print hello world i'm going to zoom in right and then um, we're going to create some variables first things first let's get the user input service let's say local uis is equal to game get service user input service right then we're going to get the combat mode event let's say local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child combat events and then lastly we're going to create a variable for the attack number so we keep track of uh which animation we need to play and stuff uh based it like based on uh what's it called based on uh like that like the previous m1 like if they just do a left punch then it's a right punch. if they just do a right punch then it's a kick if they just do a kick then it's a left punch and the cycle repeats itself so we're going to say local attack numbers equal to one like i said I'll do, i do more in-depth explaining on the actual video involved like that covers the m1 combat system but anyway we're going to say uis then input began connect function 
in parentheses we're going to say input comma processed then enter right <clears throat> and we're going to say if input the user input type is equal to item the user input type that keyboard or sorry not keep that keyboard i'm still using the same keyboard that mouse button when this is m1 and not process which means the player is not typing in chat then enter if attack number is equal to one then attack number plus equal one right then we're going to say combat event fire server in quotation marks you're going to say m1 that's the name of the event then comma in quotation marks you're going to put left punch or you do like lp for short you know up to you then we're going to sit, we're going to type else we're going to copy and paste the if statement and paste it boom control v change this of course to two then leave all that the same except for left punch changes to right punch right then you're gonna do the same thing control v and then of course just add an else to this right and you can move it over here and then just change this to three delete the plus so it's so it resets it back to one and change left punch to kick and we'll delete that we don't the local script then we can move on to the server script and server script service so you want to insert a server script into server script service you guys are going to want to rename the script to combat script and in parentheses put server boom right then i have my animations here and stuff like that um got the animations from the toolbox and stuff like i said i'm not really going over how to do all that since this video is focused on how to make a combat status system the m1 combat system is just here just to use as a like you know just to demonstrate it so I'm going to copy and paste the remote event portion right over onto the server script. So I'm gonna I'm gonna paste it right, and then I'm gonna move it to the second line because then we need to get the sound service first. So we need to say local SS to go to games game get service sound services only if you have sound effects, of course. Then we're gonna have two functions. First, when the player joins, we need to create the combat status. Or, or sorry, every time the the player's character is added, we're going to create the combat status value as well as the hitbox the combat status originally i had it parented to the player but then i was like let me parent to the character instead and then i just have it where it just is added every time the player you know dies because then at that point it kind of saves time in a sense like like let me give you a scenario real quick say if like a player status is currently set to being attacked and then the player dies right instead of having a scripted to where it would detect when the player dies and then having to reset it if they just die and it just you know it, it obviously doesn't save it would just recreate itself then you wouldn't have to do anything it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone so anyway let's go ahead and set up the first function we're going to say game dot players dot players added connect function in parentheses put plr so for player into you're going to say player dot character added connect function in parentheses you're going to put character enter right then you're going to create the combat set is variable or sorry value or also variable so we're going to say local combat status is equal to instance dot new is going to be a string value right just like how we made it inside of the mqc then you're going to parent this to the player's character and then you're going to say combat status dot name is equal to in quotation marks combat status let me just double check i'm good so then we're going to set the value by default the value should be set to nothing right so just quotation marks and then we're going to create the hitbox if you watch my other combat videos you, and you've been through this hell multiple times but unfortunately i have to go through this hell again anyway we're going to say local hitbox is equal to instance dot new in quotation marks you're going to put part comma parent this to the characters humanoid root part right then enter you're going to say hitbox or sorry not hitbox. we're going to create the world constraints we're going to world the hitbox to the player i mean to the players the characters from whenever part so we're going to say local world constraint don't know why i'm explaining that since this isn't related to the video anyway is equal to instance that do invitation marks and put world constraint parent this to the hitbox so you're going to say world constraint that part zero is equal to hitbox then world constraint that part one is equal to character dot humanoid part boom then we're going to say hitbox that name is equal to invitation marks hitbox they're going to say hitbox that anchored is equal to false then you're gonna say hitbox that massless is equal to then i'm gonna do that you're gonna say hitbox um dot massless is equal to true then you're gonna say hitbox that can collide is equal to false and hitbox that transparency is equal to one hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new um five comma six comma five point five if I can ever get it right, 5.5, then hitbox dot color is equal to color three dot new one comma zero comma zero enter. Then lastly, hitbox pivot to character dot humanoid root part 
that C frame. And just like that, we have finished setting up the first function. Now to the second function, we're going to say comment event on server events connect function, right? I'm going to scroll down so I can see. And in parentheses, I'm going to put PLR show for the player, comma, event type, comma, or one show for argument number one, then enter. First things first, we're going to create a variable for the player's character. We're going to, oh, sorry, I didn't mean, I meant to press enter. We're going to say um, local character is equal to player dot character, then set up an if statement. We're going to say if event type is equal to quotation marks M1. And we're going to say character dot combat status dot value is equal to nil, or you could say, like, you could say this is nil, nothing, whatever, right? Um, so it should be equal to this because, well, like, when I thought about the logic, like, because keep in mind, the combat status system is based on however you make it because some people have you know m1s blocking cut, small cutscenes midi uh big cutscene like it, it depends on however your game works right but it, it essentially it should all work like this because i can't really imagine a scenario where like a player is doing something to where they're able to block i mean block to where they're able to attack at the same time if that makes sense like if a player is being attacked obviously they can't just like turn around and just you know punch the person mid mid animation or something let alone if they're in a cutscene or if they're blocking they can't just start like, like they would have to stop and then do it you know you know what i'm saying so yeah so if it's equal to nothing then enter right and then i'm going to set the value as a character dot combat status setting the values quickly as soon as possible is very important so that value is equal to in quotation marks attacking it's good to clarify what attacking since there's you know different types of attacks so for me i what i do i type I put the word attacking or you can say attack and then um in parentheses i clarify uh which type of attack you know attacking m1 attacking cutscene you know what i'm saying stuff so just so you know Right, because you need to know like which thing override. Like, because if this was, because say if this was like a, um, if this was like an ultimate ability, right? You would be able to override a player. Uh, if this was sorry, if this was an ultimate ability, then you would not be able to attack a player. That makes sense. Then we're going to create a variable for the attack type. We're going to say local attack type is equal to argument number one. Right. Then we're going to set up the animation track. We're going to say local at is equal to character dot humanoid load animation. In parentheses, you want to put script, regular brackets, attack type, right? Then you're going to say AT play. It is fundamental that, that the name is the animation and match the name of the events, right? And then we're going to, of course, play the sound. So SS dot punch sound effect, play. And then we're going to create a variable for the hitbox. Local hitbox is equal to character dot humanoid food part dot hitbox right and i'm going to say hitbox dot can touch is equal to true right then i'm going to say hitbox dot touch going to set up the touch function so connect function right in parentheses you're going to put hit until we're going to have a very long if statement to pay, to pay attention first things first let's check to make sure it is either a player or an npc we're going to say if hit the parents find first child parentheses in quotation marks we want to put humanoid right and hit dot parent that name is nearly equal to player that name of course we're not you know attacking ourselves right and character dot uh not human character dot combat status dot value is nil equal to quotation marks cutscene this is of course to make sure that you know the player isn't you know uh what's it called that the player isn't currently caught in a cutscene whether they're the ones you know you know attacking somebody with like an ultimate ability or if they're the ones or if they're the ones being attacked right and then you can copy and paste all, all this so control c control v obviously you want to space it out and then think the only difference is you're just going to change this to it's that parent because it's the same thing you want to make sure you, of course you obviously don't want to try to you know use an m1 attack on someone currently kind of cutscene that wouldn't even make any sense right so then after that um for the last part we just we're gonna throw another and and then we're gonna say uh hitbox that can't touch here's how i actually figured out how i could just set it like this hitbox that looks like can't touch true this just ensures that it won't like the function won't be triggered multiple times so then we're gonna of course set hitbox that can touch to so hitbox that can oops, wait i did say hitbox not hit I, that's what i thought <laughs> that's literally what i thought i was just like i feel like an accident if i just did it now i probably did it there anyway hitbox that can touch is equal to false, right? Then I'm gonna create a variable for the enemy character. Let me just double check. Okay, I'm good. Let me create a variable for the enemy character. I'm gonna say local enemy character. 
is equal to or sorry not player character is equal to hit that parent then i'm going to say and character dot combat status dot value is equal to in quotation marks attacked right and you could you could clarify you could say attacked m1 right but it wouldn't really matter because yeah honestly no you wouldn't really need to put m1 because like if it was like a like something where like it can't be interrupted you would just put cutscene so you really could just leave it as attack honestly but it's up to you guys depending on how you want your system to work and of course we're going to take away some health so enemy character humanoid that health is uh you know less than equal to 10 right and then ss.dbz punch sound play right then i'm gonna say task that weight 0.1 second right and then i'm going to set their values back to normal so you can really copy and paste this line so control c paste it again control v this time you're just setting these back to normal so just set them back to normal and then just change one of them to character and then boom lastly we're going to go here right and we're going to throw a task that weight task that weight like one second right and then we're simply going to say if if hitbox that can touch is equal to true then hitbox that can touch is equal to false right and then uh, you could copy and paste it again so control c control v and then make sure this is character just to make sure it is set back to normal and boom just like that guys we are done as always if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description let's go ahead and test to make sure everything works okay so inside of inside of the rig we already created the combat status variable so I walk up to him and boom as you can see it's you know doing damage but that's not really the important thing so so i know it was quick but you guys notice this, you guys see the attack and then if i open up my character you'll also notice that it's you see attacking right so boom so pretty much while like while um what's it called while their status is set to attack right remember the remember this part right here where we said we need to make sure that it's empty so pretty much say if this was a player and i was attacking them once I throw a punch, they couldn't just turn. They couldn't just turn and punch at the same time because their thing will be set to uh, attack. Wait, is that the right one? Oh well, anyway, it should be set to. So it would be set to attack, right? Uh, let me just replay the thing because I don't know if I was tripping. Unless cause I know it, it is moving really fast since it is literally zero point one second. Let me see. Yo, am I tripping? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, there we go. Oh, sorry, I was tripping. Oh, oh, the hitbox. Oh, I'm tripping. Oh, the hitbox. That's what it is. I was just like, what is going on? Anyway, but yeah. So as, as you guys can see, it was changing the uh, status value and stuff there. So yeah, so you wouldn't be able to attack at the same time and stuff. And that's the whole point because obviously you wouldn't want people to inter interrupt certain things depending on you know the context of the situation. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you guys want a part two and me clarifying and showing you guys how to do, you know, other things, which is like, an, you know, an extension add on to this, then for sure, I got you guys. Just let me know. And stuff uh hope you guys been enjoying all the videos i've been dropping i got uh i got all the long long running series uh, i got them all coming out with new parts battlegrounds you know battlegrounds part four jjk part three um blade where not blade works um blocks root part two blade ball part i think four uh, yeah i think it's four anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did leave a like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching